thank you very much for having me. And uh, this presentation is on the fossil turtles from the late Cretaceous Nanaimo group of Vancouver Island. Uh, and as I mentioned, this is largely a uh, review of cur the current state of affairs and some of the uh, ongoing uh, projects that I'm just beginning. Uh, and hopefully I can share uh, the, uh, the excitement and significance of the fossils that I'm describing. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, so I'd like to uh, acknowledge that the Royal BC Museum is located on the traditional territories of the Lekwungen speaking peoples. I also want to highlight the fact that uh, the fossils that you're going to see today were collected on the traditional territories of the Comox uh, band. Next slide, please. So uh, um, sea turtles uh, today, or uh, chelonioids, uh, ch chelonioid turtles are, um, a quite diverse and well-known group. They're very charismatic uh, vertebrate species. Uh, they're, uh, of course, are only uh, uh, marine reptiles that are still uh, extant today. There's used to be a, a great many more marine reptiles, but now our, our turtles are some of our only representatives of that. Um, but their uh, uh, fossil history, next slide, please. Uh, is a little bit more enigmatic. And the uh, diversity of fossil turtles in the Cretaceous, particularly uh, in the marine environments, uh, is uh, not well understood. And there has been a lot of uh, study in the last few years um, that's really uh, up to the number of uh, recognized species uh, worldwide, um, but we're still left with the fact that there's not really um, much in terms of uh, known about the origins of modern groups uh, in the fossil record of marine turtles. Next slide. So I'm going to highlight uh, some specimens uh, that are uh, from the uh, Courtney area of, of BC, um, looking at the Nanaimo group. So we've got two sites along the, the Puntledge River as well as a site uh, on the Trent River. Uh, next slide, please. All of these uh, sites are uh, the Haslam Formation, so uh, about 84 and a half million years old, and in particular from the uh, uh, Spinoceramus Schmidt eye zone of the Haslam Formation, um, because uh, <laughs> we we can pretty confidently identify that, um, particularly from the field work conducted this year, uh, with actual specimens of that uh, index fossil found uh, at the the dig site itself. Next slide. So uh, I'll go through what's known about the, these fossil turtles, starting with the Puntledge uh, Site 1, uh, which was historically collected. Next slide. Uh, this was a fossil described by Betsy Nichols in 1992. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, pretty uh, fragmentary, but it contains um, uh, preserved elements of the humerus, the coracoid, the denary, the ilium, some of the uh, peripheral shell bones, as well as a, a couple of um, uh, ungules as well, and, and uh, some other bone fragments. And it was identified as uh, Desmatochiles CF loi. Um, and, but when you review some of the features uh, it today, there's been a lot that we've, uh, uh, learned about uh, protostegids or, or this family of, of ancient marine turtles um, since this was described in 1992. And a lot of the features used to characterize this as Desmatochiles are more broadly um, actually just characteristic of uh, protostegids. So this material is worth a little bit of a revisit to know exactly what we have, um, but it is in the vicinity of the, the family tree of, of Desmatochiles. Um, next slide, please. If we look at some of the other species of Desmatochiles and, and some better preserved material, you can see some of the characteristic features. Um, you can see, for instance, the uh, relatively narrow uh, symphysis of the denary. Um, so that is certainly very characteristic as well. Um, there's also various features of the humerus as well um, in terms of its proportions and the size of the, the, um, uh, the lateral um, uh, 
tuberosities that characterize it as being a protostegid. Next slide, please. And then uh, I want to highlight quickly as well the what the characteristic shell morphology of these animals look like. Uh, and you can see that protostegids have uh, relatively smooth shells. If you look at the example on the right, um, the, the, these animals, they're, they're sort of, uh, uh, it's sort of a gentle bone texture, but nothing really in terms of bumps or, or any sort of ornamentation on the shell like you can see in some other turtle species that can be very, very characteristic of turtle families. Next slide, please. I'd also like to point out that uh, the material that has been referred to Desmatochiles uh, does tend to uh, range in age. You can see uh, the Colombian species of Desmatochiles um, from down in the Bohemian and Aptian, uh, and that a species, particular species is known from Colombia. Uh, most of the Desmatochiles loi material is from the Cenomanian Tronian of the uh, Western Interior Basin. And then the material that we have um, uh, in the uh, Haslam Formation of Vancouver Island uh, is uh, much later than that. It, it's Santonian in age. The, the, eight, the dates are a little bit off on, on this figure. Um, but if you sort of lower down those green boxes a little bit um, where you get uh, a Desmatis Keeley CF Loi from Vancouver Island, um, uh, it's, it's substantially later in time uh, and it actually co-occurs with uh, some specimen, a specimen that's been uh, recovered from the uh, uh, Cohila region of Mexico as well. And if uh, you are familiar with the Baja BC uh, hypotheses as well, which is quite well established at this juncture, there, um, you'll know that the, the paleobiogeography at that time actually puts uh, Vancouver Island much further south during that time interval as well. So actually a pretty, pretty comparable uh, location, but just on the other side of, uh, of Western North America. Uh, so this, as I mentioned, uh, probably uh, indicates that there is some need to revisit some of that material because given the fact of se separation uh, several million years, uh, it's unlikely to be exactly the same, the same species. And as I mentioned, we've uh, learned a lot more about protostegids in the intervening years since 1992. Next slide, please. Uh, so moving on to uh, the Trent River site, this preserves an entirely different turtle species, but also from the Haslam Formation. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this material uh, is disarticulated, but here's a bit of a, a reconstruction that I uh, uh, have been working on. And as I said, this is sort of ongoing work, but it uh, seems to belong to a family of turtles called the Gila chelydrids. Um, and as some affinity with uh, uh, Naoma Kelly's, which is an Aptian uh, terrestrial turtle of all things. However, there have been some Gila chelydrids that have been noted from uh, estuarine environments as well. So it's, it's a, a near shore interpretation of uh, the paleo environment is still consistent with the distribution of this turtle. Next slide. The uh, notable thing about this family actually is the ornamentation on the shell. And you can see a, a magnification of that here. Um, there's tiny um, tubercles that are about a millimeter across. And these are very, uh, pronounced bumps. They're, they're, they're not even just a, a your normal tubercle. They are very sharply defined. They are in fact quite thin at their base uh, and really look like sort of round capped cylinders that stick out of the, uh, of the shell. So it's very, very prominent, very distinctive uh, ornamentation that we really don't see in any other groups of turtles. Next slide, please. So now we're gonna move on to uh, some more recent work. And so just earlier this year, um, I was contacted um, about a new fossil turtle that has been found on the Puntledge River, actually just a few kilometers downstream of where um, uh, Dr. Nichols turtle was uh, found. And next slide, please. And uh, that, uh, here's a, a shot of, uh, of the site along the Puntledge River uh, from earlier this uh, spring when we were able to go out and collect it in April of this year. Next slide, please. 
here's the block as it was uh, before it was collected. Uh, we've done as, as little sort of over preparation of the specimen as we can. Next slide, please. But you can see um, here highlighted uh, several different disarticulated uh, parts of this uh, turtle skeleton. So we have multiple parts of the uh, plastron, of the carapace, uh, as well as uh, on, on the right hand side in sort of the skinny area uh, looks to be um, uh, some postcranial elements as well. So we think it's more than, than just a shell. And I'm crossing my fingers that once we get it back opened up in the lab here uh, and prepared that there's going to be some, some, uh, some skull inside. That would be excellent. Um, but uh, uh, next slide, please. Uh, this photo didn't turn out particularly well, but I also wanted to highlight a bit of the, the texture of the, uh, the fossil turtle as well, the texture of the surface. Um, and the sculpturing is such that it's not smooth like you see in uh, Dismatic Achilles, and it's also not uh, very pustular like in Myomachelix. It seems to be um, uh, Basically, have a, a sort of broad bumps, um, the sort of a, a sort of a gentle sculpturing, um, which doesn't correspond to either of those groups. So, so it's looking like a, a potential third um, of species of turtle from this same unit here, um, which would be very exciting. And it's not a family that I actually recognize. So, there's a lot of work to be done um, that's going to have to wait on the the preparation of the specimen. Uh, next slide, please. So. I want to go just quickly and talk about why the fossil turtles in the marine assemblage are um, so interesting um, here. And it has to do a lot with, with the changes in the ecosystem that happened in the Campanian. So with this being a Sam Santonian assemblage, uh, there's uh, not a lot of samples of vertebrates in the, in the Santonian and uh, there's a lot of changes that, that take place immediately before uh, the, the Campanian sort of regular assemblages that were typical, that were typical of the Western Interior Basin and in fact uh, elsewhere in the world as well. And so next slide please. One of the changes uh, seems to happen is that we, you, as you get a transition into the Campanian, um, uh, protostegids become very, very large. They're, they're not a small turtle um, normally, but then in the Campanian, you get the, the truly large uh, uh, protostega as well as archelon um, that are just these massive, massive turtles. Uh, and then uh, they go extinct. Um, and uh, ba basically by the end of the Campanian, uh, there aren't any protostegids that we're aware of in the fossil record. Next slide, please. Uh, and uh, helichelydrids have a, a sort of a similar pattern as well. Um, they're, they're most abundant in sort of the, the early or, or early late Cretaceous assemblages um, worldwide. Uh, in North America, they become extinct in the, in the middle Campanian and then um, they become extinct worldwide at the end of the Maastrichtian. So these groups, which we're finding um, go through uh, some pretty severe uh, changes and extinctions uh, sort of immediately after this time period. So it's, this is really interesting to sort of get this before shot of, uh, of these assemblages. Next slide, please. So in summary, next slide. So the Haslam Formation preserves possibly three species of, uh, of fossil turtles in the nearshore environment. Um, they belong to uh, protostegids, helichelydrids, and possibly an additional uh, family uh, that is un un currently uh, unknown at this time. Um, and then the specimens represent a rarely sampled vertebrate biome uh, just before some major uh, extinctions for marine turtles. And uh, we still don't know uh, in, in the uh, marine assemblage where the fossil turtles that are our long ghost lineages from for our modern uh, turtle groups originate. So that's really exciting. Uh, next slide, please. 
I have a, a lot of people to acknowledge, including um, uh, my collaborators uh, that working on various parts of this project, uh, Victoria Arbor, Don Brankman, Matthew Vavrick, Joe Morin, uh, as well as the, the finders of these various finds. Um, I, I was not the one who found any of these fossils. So I'm incredibly thankful for all of the people going out there looking for fossils and, and finding them and reporting them. Uh, and uh, as well as the big volunteers, provincial partners and funding sources. Next slide. Thank you.